Watt was born in 1736, so he was very much a product of the 18th century, the first century of modernity, if you like. He was a Scot. He was a product of a very closely defined Scottish Enlightenment that was developing intellectually, economically, and culturally from the 1750s. But he was also product of a, a broader, you could call it English or European Enlightenment, if you wish. He shared the outlook that we associate with the Enlightenment, which, if you boil it down, is essentially a belief in the power of knowledge, the power of ideas to bring about immediate change in the here and now world. He moved among radicals, notably uh, Dr. Joseph Priestley, but he, he wasn't a radical, and as the challenges to the British state developed in the 1790s, he moved across the spectrum more and more into a loyalist camp. And I would say too that some of his business practices, as opposed to his practices as an intellectual, cannot really be described as enlightened business practices. They were fairly traditional business practices which were all to do with getting money, making money, taking the biggest profit margin you possibly can on goods. But he was a little bit conflicted about that, it has to be said because he was playing in these two registers. Uh, there were times when the temptation would be to reveal all in the belief that knowledge is a, a universal good which should be available to all. And then uh, in a different register, the knowledge is earning us a nice living and why share it too widely? He was fortunate to uh, mix with groups throughout his life such as the Lunar Circle. He uh, interacted with these individuals and uh, was able to hone his ideas in the uh, cut and thrust of debate. We do know that the Lunar Society functioned fairly regularly from about 1775, probably until about 1804, something like that. It is pretty clear that they are discussing current topics of the day, whether they be cultural topics or industrial technological topics. They do, as far as I can judge, refrain from talking about politics and refrain from talking about religion because it was understood among the members that these were areas where they had profound differences. There's a risk in uh, depicting Watt as a unique character, a lone genius. He's sometimes depicted quite wrongly as being the inventor of the steam engine. It's important to emphasize that he was probably never a single inventor of the steam engine. What Watt did was hugely perfect existing steam power technology uh, to make it uh, more efficient and uh, ultimately more portable. By 1815, after the wars of the Revolution and Napoleon, when um, Europe could once again return to Britain to see what was going on, the thing that the technological tourists in particular concentrate on is how Britain has been transformed by steam power technology. Powering ahead as a great imperial power. I think we remember him as we have always remembered him and celebrated him as the man who was responsible more than anyone else for the great macro invention of the age, the steam engine. It's chiefly his role as a steam engineer that requires us to acknowledge his greatness. Thank you.